Hey guys, welcome to Flat Top King. Hey, today is all about that surf and turf burrito. You guys have answered the call, and I think we got a fantastic one for you today. So this is the deal. A couple days ago, weeks ago, something like that, we came up with the idea where we had to abandon the cook and I had all the shrimp left over, and I said, what would you guys like us to make? Uh, and there was an option between shrimp scampi and like kind of like a California style burrito or a surf and turf style burrito or something. Well, 111 or 112 comments, responses, and I'm telling you, the burrito barely beat out the scampi. So don't worry, if you voted for scampi, we'll make scampi. Uh, I'm going to save that for a cheat day because I want to make it with noodles. I think once you develop that sauce on the flat top grill, the noodles will be a great way to absorb that sauce. I know that's not what this video is about. I'm just telling you guys what's come down the pipeline. Let's get to what we're talking about today. All right. We're cooking on the new 28-inch Weber griddle. I know a lot of you asked, have I cooked on smaller griddles before? This is the smallest griddle I've ever cooked on. You guys can see how much real estate space we're already taking up just by skillet. I always say four burner, 36-inch, but that's just because we do a lot of stuff on it. The idea is... Onions and chorizo are going into the beans because it's fantastic. It's one of my favorites, really. Next is something that we've never done before, but I feel like more of an earthy, deep tone versus like a fresh tone. That baby rabbits. I'm telling you, we need to film. <laughs> you need to have a GoPro in the back of your camera so when you film, like That's I see head. all this stuff. Yeah. All right. We're going to roast. Uh, let's see. We're going to make a salsa. We're going to do a roasted salsa. Uh, we're going to do uh, peppers. A jalapeno peppers, tomatoes, garlic, um, onion. It's going all on the griddle. Get some deep, deep, deep char. Uh, we're going to saute some peppers and onions to put in the burrito. We've got a very overripe avocado. Instead of making guacamole, I'm just going to take it, kind of like smash it rough style, just to try to separate the flavors because I think the salsa is going to be key to this. And then we got a surf and turf style. We've got shrimp, and we've got a beautiful New York strip steak. The shrimp's going to be done by my man, uh, sure Shot Sid's uh, lime seasoning. Um, I've had it for a while and it's been on the back burner, but more and more, I have to keep telling you guys, uh, once you start picking something up it, you know, and you like it, you keep going back to it, and that's a telltale sign of good seasoning. Uh, we'll have the link to that in the description below. And of course, you guys know my man Heath Riles, killing it in the spice game. When we talk about, uh, when I'm teasing you guys and I've got seasonings in hand, sometimes I play around with somebody else's spice. Since we're going kind of like a, uh, a Mexican style theme. I wanted a little bit more depth of flavor. I really love this jalapeno garlic. So what I decided to do is add some chili powder, some cumin, and some paprika. We got big burritos today. I'm doing low carb. Obviously, you could do this with a regular burrito. You could do it in a bowl. Whatever you want to do it. Whew. That's a lot. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, let's go. Um, this side of the griddle is on high. This side of the griddle is on like a medium. The good thing about using this, uh, the griddle like this, we just posted the breakfast video on the griddle that surprised the heck out of me based on the fact that you can control the temperatures extremely well. Um, this today is going to be a high temp. So we did the low temps. We did the eggs. We did the pancakes. We did all that. Well, today is about high temps. We're going to get a good sear on the steak. and see how much uh, my yard reaction can happen um, while we're dealing with the high temps on the griddle. That should be about all the testing I need. All right, I've just got one tube of chorizo sausage, and then I've just got, you know, what is that? Like basically one third of a cup of like diced onion. We're only talking about one can of pinto beans, not a lot, so it's not gonna matter that much. Remember how I talk about sometimes when you season something, that uh, you could be seizing and not knowing it. This is one of those times. This is, you know, like, for example, the griddle is hot enough now to produce smoke. It's at the smoke point. I'm using avocado oil. I season with it already. So right now the griddle is actually in the seasoning stage while it's cooking the stuff. So it's a great way to introduce, um, you know, like a brand new griddle to a cuisine like this because you get those high temps. All right, the trees are looking pretty good. You start seeing some of that fat rendering out. The onion's getting nice and soft. I'm just gonna take a whole can of uh, pinto beans. All 
learn. Our vegetables are very close to being done. You guys see what I'm talking about right here? A lot of that moisture is reduced. I still want to kind of keep it, you know, I'm not saying runny. It's going to thicken up just a little bit, but I don't want it like too bone dry. Okay, I'm going to keep this griddle on top on high. That's going to be our steak zone. And let me show you the seasoning real quick. I'm going to get the seasonings on there. I got my paper towel. I definitely want this to be dry. Boy, the weather is not working with us lately. I just imagine how many times I'm going over the, the length, the width, all that stuff. Of the steak. Right. That's how I determine how much seasoning to use. So it's chili powder. Yep. Paprika would be about half. So I just imagine one layer. And then the cumin, the same thing, just one layer. Very common ingredients. And, and that, in a nutshell, is basically what I'm looking for. <laughs> what? Start oh, yeah. Finger. What? Let me taste. It's fantastic. Oh, that is actually really good. <gasps> just like that cinnamon that everybody's been raving about to put into the salmon. Oh, yeah. Look at the comments, and they're like, hey, it's really good. And I'm like, well. That, honestly, yeah, that was super good. You guys... Check out our website for but the a little bit. salmon recipe for the it, seasoning that he made for that. Yeah, a little bit goes a long way. All right, while this is resting, let me clean my hands up. All right, we got our blender. I've taken one jalapeno off the griddle already. We might actually depend on how mild it is, slice it up to go with the peppers and onions. Um, if not, and you like more heat, definitely add it. Let's get that off the griddle. There's that jalapeno. And then this garlic, I wanted to be really careful with it because I did not want it to burn. I'm just gonna roast it just for a second, just to get fragrant. Keep an eye on that. While that's going, all right, I'm a huge cilantro fan, so if you think it's too much, then obviously you need to take some out for you, but I do the stems, I do it all. I love cilantro. Let's get a nice toast on the garlic. This color's pretty close. All right, a hefty, hefty, hefty little bit of salt. Isn't that an oxymoron? A hefty little bit. <laughs> <laughs> now that you mentioned it, it does sound kind of something I'd say. <laughs> I've got some doozies. This is three quarters of a lime, but these limes are massive and they're juicy, juicy, juicy. So we're gonna hold off on three quarters. You know, sometimes you get dry limes. Oh, jeez. Good thing they didn't get on my eye. Oh yeah, that's a lot of lime. All right, we'll put everything in the blender. I don't want it super smooth. I just want to it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely spicy. All right, so here we go. Our vegetables are about to be ready. For this shrimp, I'm just going to add this lime pepper and some salt. Just a touch of oil, get that tossed around, get that ready to go on the griddle. All right, ready? Mm -hmm. Finishing up. The griddle's extremely hot. It's getting dry, which is a good sign. It means that it's already done seasoning. So I'm just gonna put those vegetables down. Remember, this is still medium. Right here on the hot side, I'm gonna use that beef tallow to flip often so we don't burn it. There's a difference between burning and blackening. I bet I know why. Because of the seasoning that you have on your steak will burn Abs while you're searing it. Boy, golly, I'm getting good, honey. Okay, cut that completely on low in a new spot, just like that, right at the nick of time. Oh, just gotta be fast. 
So that was only about probably 60 to 90 seconds. Yeah, that's a hot griddle. That's a hot griddle. That's looking good right there. We'll be able to sear the fat cap on it and everything. Not too long, 60, 90 seconds. Right back over, what a beautiful sear. That griddle's still on high. I want each piece to have its own landing zone. I want to get a crust on the shrimp. See that char? That's what I'm looking for. That's just another layer of flavor. Cook the steak to a rare stage because I'm gonna throw it right on the flat top right at the last second, just to uh, um, help the help it get to about medium rare. Um, it's just a little bit more depth of flavor, pick up a little bit more flavor on the griddle. Nothing really, no really rhyme or reason, but I just think it's gonna work. Heck, I'd eat it just like that. Still mooing. Mm. Let me try a bite. Mm. Mm. Oh my gosh, honey. <laughs> I mean, I knew there was a reason why I married you. <laughs> Golly. I'm going super thin. I mean, it's not like lacy thin because you guys got to remember. See that band that we talk about when we talk about steaks? That's why you flip often. See how well done that is on the exterior and rare on the inside? To me, this is a steak no-no, but since it's going to the burrito, it doesn't matter. You'll never know it. I mean, it tastes fantastic. Yeah. I think it's a steak yes, yes. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> you said it was a steak no-no. Oh. <clears throat> I can't stop eating it. Gosh, speaking of steak that you can't stop eating, <clears throat> that picanha you made... I don't know when we're publishing this video versus when we're publishing that picanha video, but that was incredible. You almost don't even need to do that. I think the chewiness though, I've learned, you don't want to pull this stuff. You want it to be, I'm going to dice it up just a little bit more to go in the burrito. You got to remember when you bite into a burrito, you don't want all the ingredients to fall out. So I just want to basically, I'm talking about like, that's it for me. I mean, that's it. Uh, I like it medium rare. I just want to knock that rawness off. Rareness off, not raw. Just like that. It'll fit right back in its own pan juices. Just like that. Okay. Just warm up a little bit of tortilla. I'm going to cut these up just a little bit more. All right, see how nice toasty brown we got? It's still very pliable here, but it's a little, I mean, right on the verge of being crispy here. I want that because I want that tortilla to stay dry. So this is how I thought about building it. Just take a nice little layer of peppers, onions, jalapenos, a little of that uh, guac, or guac, the avocado smash, just to keep it fresh, something different. Those beans. I'm trying my best not to overstuff this. Some shrimp. Some steak. Then come into that fire roasted salsa. Griddle roasted. What did I say? Fire roasted. Oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> Blistered. Blistered. That's the word. Golly. All right. When you're folding, you're going to fold like a V. Wings. I call them wings. Okay. 
close your edges inside your wings pull it tight oh told you then we'll cut one right in half so you guys can see the inside i'm gonna make a couple more for some friends but that is what it should look like mm. All right, you got the ingredients there. Like I said, wings. So you're gonna make like a V coming this way. Take that tip, come over the ingredients, kind of pull it back, fold in your left, fold in your right. And it creates like a little pocket. Perfectly, perfectly rolled. Edges don't fall out. Then you come back in and cut it. And that is our surf and turf burrito, trezo beans, griddle roasted salsa, you name it. That's it. You ready to bite it? <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> I know when I get the look. <laughs> I know when I get the look. You're gonna eat the whole burrito probably before you give us your opinion. <laughs> mm -hmm. On a scale of one to 10, I have no idea how far up the scale this is of the stuff we've made. Being one, I love Mexican food. This is probably the best. I mean, you all of the individual ingredients are fantastic. I can't get over how good that stinking steak is. The steak, the shrimp, the avocado. I was worried about making a guacamole because I didn't want it to overpower. The beans come through, everything is. My my only critique would have been less beans. Mm -hmm. But every... you gotta love beans. I guess I love beans, but that's why you go through the line, you get to pick what you choose. I always say, what do I say? Cook what you like, Yep. right? Guys, we have a membership button down below. It's a joining program. We thank each and every one of you for taking time for doing so. Uh, check us out on The Girdle Group on Facebook where we talk about griddles, where you guys give us inspiration where you guys tell us what to make and we really, really enjoy the feedback back and forth. Last but not least, thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends. Peace.